glory to Jesus Christ. So we're reading the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Let's put this, get a fuller picture. Picture. There. There. Hmm? Catechism of the Catholic Church, the second edition, published by Libreria Eritrici Vaticana, by uh, in in 20, uh, 2016, this is a 2019 reprint, and it's also available as publication number 7-649 from the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops in Washington, D.C., and... We're on part one, chapter two, God comes to meet man. Article two, well actually, it's chapter three. Man's response to God. Man's response to God. Article 1. Roman numeral 4. Roman numeral 3, rather. Characteristics of faith. And Article 2, we believe. And this is Roman numeral 3. Number 172 to 175, and page 47, page 47. Also, this is available through online on this. The, uh, you can get www.usccb.org, that's the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, slash sites, slash sites, slash default, slash files, slash flipbook, slash Catechism of the Catholic Church or www.vatican.va, Catechism of the Catholic Church in English and the life. Or you can get a PDF drive, a free download ebook of the Catechism of the Catholic Church from Catholic Culture. Catholic Culture. Culture, as we say here in Boston. Area. Area. And let's pray. O oh Lord, Help us to live in this one faith, in being centered totally on you and in faith, in fidelity. Not just believing, not just feeling, but truly investing ourselves, truly yielding to this gift of your self-extension to us. And help us in the midst of all of this, as we're, our faith is assaulted, and all, from all directions, that we may be solid in our faith, solid in our commitment to you, solid in our commitment to the full deposit of the faith, and solid in putting this faith into effect in the power of hope, and especially in the articulation of love in action. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Did I make the sign of the cross? Yes, I did, I think. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructed the hearts of the faithful, grant that in the same spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord, amen. O heavenly King, comfort a spirit of truth who are everywhere present 
and filling all things, O treasury of blessings, and giver of life, come dwell within us and cleanse our souls, O gracious Lord, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, were without end. Amen. So, page 47, Roman numeral 3, only one faith, starting with number 172. Throughout the centuries, in so many languages, cultures, peoples, and nations, the Church has constantly confessed this one faith, receiving from the one Lord, transmitted by one baptism, and grounded in the conviction that all people have only one God and Father. See Ephesians 4, 4 through 6. Saint Irenaeus of Lyon, a witness of this faith, declared, Indeed, the Church, though scattered throughout the whole world, even to the ends of the earth, having received the faith from the apostles and the disciples, guards this preaching and faith with care, as dwelling in but a single house, and similarly believes as if having but one soul and a single heart, and preaches teaches and hands on this faith with a unanimous voice, as if possessing only one mouth. And that's St. Irenaeus against the heresies, uh, 1, 10, 1 through 2, Patrologia Greca, 7, 1, uh, 5, 5, 4, 5, 2, 5, 2, 5, 3, and also quoting, uh, more from that against the heresies. Notably Gnostic heresy, but other heresies as well. Or shall we say responding to them? So the church has uh, developed uh, as it's grown throughout all these many nations in uh, cross fertilization of the varied cultures, applying the apostolic faith it, it, in many languages. Some people think they said, "Oh, it was only Latin." Well, Latin, no. It was a while before it got into Latin, actually, uh, even in the West. But um, all of these languages, all languages. Some people say, well, uh, uh, there are uh, some sacred languages and the others shouldn't be used. That's not true. Every language is sacred. And unfortunately, every language can be profaned as well. But uh, getting the, uh, uh, getting to uh, a, a perspective that you can get from another language. So, you know, that's why uh, the, the, the biblical and uh, liturgical languages are studied. Uh, liturgical languages, like I have mentioned Latin, but uh, Greek, Koine Greek, uh, Aramaic, Syriac, uh, Ge'ez in Ethiopia, Coptic in Egypt, uh, uh, various in uh, this Armenian, Georgian, uh, and then later on, Old Slavonic, these liturgical languages, which give different nu nuances. But then, of course, these were initially meant as, as vernaculars, because the people were, at least the elites, were speaking these languages. And so, uh, as time went on, the people's languages developed and changed, but the, the, the written language that they had didn't, the liturgical language. So, so we we see the uh, the the use of, of vernacular languages, and so in, in the West since Vatican II, although actually there were situations before that, um, such as the uh, the Glagolithic in what is now Croatia and some other the the Latin liturgy in in Old Slavonic, uh, the, uh, the heritage of Saint Cyril Methodius. Uh, as well as the greater heritage in the 
the Byzantine liturgy of St. Cyril and Methodius. But all these different languages, and uh, but to try to get an accurate translation, sometimes that's, that's harder. And uh, in the late 60s and 70s, they had what they called uh, dynamic equivalency. So sometimes it was quite a, a paraphrase, sometimes a, a wide paraphrase, which and much of the text dropped even. So you look at a collect translated in 1969, 1970, and one translated in uh, 2010, 2011. And the, um, the richness of the, the one in 2011, when it, 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 textually uh, and vocabulary and stuff like that is, is often astounding that they're they're like two different collects, and sometimes I use them as such, you know, in prayer sessions, not in the liturgy. But or maybe I could use you can you could use as a collect for the prayer of the faithful a, a wide variety of things. You can make that make it up even. Uh, so sometimes I'll use that, uh, and the uh, alternative prayers that they had in the nineteen seventy liturgy. Sometimes I use those for collects at the end of the prayer of the faithful on a Sunday or, or, or a feast day, <clears throat> or from other sources, the wide variety of sources. That So many languages and cultures. So that so there's been problems sometimes. This can, uh, the, we have to evangelize the culture, not the other way around. <coughs> we have to... Uh, bring the gospel to the culture rather than uh, have the gospel watered down by a culture. And uh, this has not always been a successful thing, doing that, because uh, often they accepted aspects of a culture that in the long run were not compatible with, with Christianity <coughs> uh, and overlooked things. But the the church the church uh, accepted the richness and and truthfulness as as uh, Vatican II says anything that's true, the church embraces. So if there are things that could express aspects of of the faith <coughs> in a quote unquote new way, we're talking about maybe you know fifteen hundred years ago, but still it's true uh, today. That that should be uh, embraced, but uh, the, with the disdain for and something that's traditional is uh, a, is a haughtiness that is very mistaken and often uh, robbing the people of 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 aspects of their heritage that are, are very beautiful. Now, often things have to be dusted off because often the meaning, sometimes the meanings have been forgotten. <coughs> and the, uh, the, uh, the gospel meanings from these things, or even the natural, natural religion meanings, have to be uh, exposed more, brought out back to the fore. So, uh, so there's this diversity, but there's one faith. There's one set of doctrines. You can't say, well, my culture, in my culture, this doctrine, let's say, uh, monogamy. Uh, <clears throat> one man, one woman, for life, in love, which it's supposed to be in love. But it, uh, unfortunately, it hasn't always been uh, done that way. And uh, of mutual, mutual uplift for the sake of family, if God blesses them with that, which is usually the case, um, then, um, so the monogamy. But then there's polygamy. Uh, that Many cultures accept that, which polygamy, if you're honest, is a form of sex slavery, or uh, other forms of slavery, actually, on the case of the woman, the woman. Yeah, yes, and say, oh, it's in the Bible. Yeah, it's in the Bible, but it's been overturned by Christ. Because uh, Christ said in the beginning, as he was talking about divorce, but it applies as much to, maybe even more so, to, to uh, 
the reality of monogamy and the rejection of, of polygamy. This, uh, in the beginning, it was not so. It said, uh, the man shall leave his, his uh, mother and cling to his wife. The, 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 uh, the two shall become one flesh. So the two become one flesh. The three don't become one flesh. The four, the five don't become one flesh. Then there was also the sin of, of uh, another sex slavery sin, uh, concubinage, and in, even literally sex slavery, to, you know, ca- capturing them. And people say, well, this is all right, and, and try to justify it, again, often from the Old Testament. And then, of course, the uh, groups that claim to supersede the revelation of the New Testament, Islam in particular, uh, say, oh, well, yeah, polygamy is all right, and concubinage is all right, and and even uh, uh, the uh, a, a woman of, of uh, uh, obtained by your right hand, which meant in this, in war, uh, uh, that uh, it's, but that's not compatible, and uh, and it shouldn't be tolerated. Well, that one often the the the. Uh, they say yes. This is against the teaching of Christ and the and the teaching of the church and stuff. But it would be winked at. You know, again, uh, quote unquote, mistresses, uh, and and the like. You know, of course, it's usually the uh, the male and the pa- these patriarchal things that um, was uh, quote unquote getting away with, you know, uh, serial adultery and and other for and, and sometimes. Uh, the wife was humiliated by the uh, the adulterous couple, or sometimes it was more than a couple, uh, just pushed in her face. So that that uh, that's a gross sin, a, a gross uh, adultery, especially uh, against Christian marriage when these people had gone into Christian marriage. So um, there is diversity of cultures, but we acculturate, we don't uh, acculturate, we don't uh, embrace that which is incompatible uh, 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 with morally or uh, spiritually uh, with uh, Christianity, with, with Catholic Christianity, apostolic Catholic Christianity. And then different peoples, all that. So we're all together. You know, uh, racism, uh, ethnic uh, superiority, sort of thing. You, know, you could say, well, our aspects of our, but that would be dealing with culture. Our aspects of our culture are more compatible with the gospel than these other cultures, they might say. Well, that's to be shown by by action and by the fruits. <coughs> but all peoples are invited to the church, but uh, but on God's standards. So you can't say, well, um, I'll take this, you know, the so-called cafeteria Catholics who are actually Catholics, but uh, I'm talking about people who know better, um, like clergy, of, uh, that it's the whole a whole thing. You you don't say I, I I don't like this aspect of God. Well, that's fine. Don't like it. Yes, is it could is it uh, inconvenient? Is it even a struggle, especially again in, in the situation of cultures that are hostile to uh, gospel morality, gospel to gospel, hostile 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 to. Uh, teachings of, of the faith, doctrines of the faith. So we don't say, well, I'll, I'm going to uh, water all this down and say, you know, still stay, I'm a Catholic. You know, it sounds like people say, oh, I, I support abortion, and, uh, quote, unquote, the right to uh, 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 of abortion, which is, abortion is fetal stage homicide, uh, and, and, and claiming to be Catholic, some of them claiming to be devout Catholics. I won't name anybody, uh, but uh, at this point, but uh, and people in power, all this stuff. So that's just, 
And then often these are not, people are not corrected by their bishops, by their pastors, by that. Sometimes it's fear, especially if you're in a situation where, you know, the, uh, it's a dictatorship and uh, you could be carted off. As we see the uh, heroic example of uh, the, the Archbishop of Managua in, in, uh, in Nicaragua for uh, doing that. And we've seen uh, courageous things, even martyrs uh, among bishops of the church standing up for the faith, uh, standing up for uh, often morality, standing up for, uh, for the situation of the poor, as in uh, uh, St. Oscar Romero uh, and others. But then we've seen the ones who have just been the opposite, who have been totally uh, capitulated to the culture, uh, the worst aspects of the culture sometimes, uh, or silent. They will be silent uh, because, uh, you know, we don't want to uh, aggravate the wealthy who could be a, a source of our, uh, our income or uh, the powerful who could, uh, again, throw us into jail or, or make things difficult for us. And uh, so the capitulating to the uh, often the worst aspects of the culture, often in the name of progress, of course. This, uh, uh, but uh, Christian progress, that is progress in grace, is progress in virtue. So in that, in that which is bringing you know, true freedom. So nations, okay, so, so uh, nationalism, it can be good. We, we should be uh, upholding our nations, but when they're doing good and uh, be, uh, uh, and try to establish uh, the righteousness of our nations and the, uh, the positive things in our constitutions and all this stuff and, and upon the, uh, of a, the holding of freedom and all of these things. But uh, some forms of national can, can be very uh, destructive, very invasive. You know, look at the current nationalism in Russia, for example. Uh, but they, then it could be, you could pick anywhere, which can be aberrant nationalisms. Uh, that, and of course, then there's the opposite, this, this uh, hate your country first sort of thing and uh, <clears throat> degrade all of the uh, authentically positive things of the country. Uh, and uh, things can get uh, very nasty and, and violent and, and persecutory for, uh, from a either direction. And as, as again, St. So, uh, there's one faith the church has constantly confessed this one faith. Yes, it's developed, but it's developed as an acorn, develops into a tree. It's an authentic, organic development, not an aberrant one. So uh, this one faith we see from the one Lord, that God is the Lord, Caesar is not the Lord, uh, uh, the people of... of uh, of quote unquote influence, whether of wealth or of fame or, or, or of power or various other powers. There is one Lord, the one Lord, the Trinity. <clears throat> and in particular, our one Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Receive from the one Lord, again, if this, if the, uh, if Christ's promise is true, that the gates of hell will not prevail. This is, this is the, uh, not that there are barnacles on the ship of the church that have to be scraped off, that are not authentic, that are not uh, expressive of the deposit of faith, or people in it, sometimes in positions of power we've seen historically, just use it for exploitation. Or, or those who are, you know, who are just capitulated to uh, uh, 
going along to get along. But where are they going? What direction are they going? Are they going towards God? Are they leading people towards God? Or are they leading them further away? Are they leading them into <clears throat> deeper fullness of the one holy Catholic and apostolic faith of Christ or away from it? <clears throat> are they leading people into the challenging ethics of do to others as you would have them do to you and of, and of uh, the objective reality of, of right and wrong and so much? Or are we going the other way around? So, you know, slavery is, is an example that was uh, just about universal uh, vi wicked vice around the institution uh, 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 all over the place. Uh, uh, all to, so many times in history. But note it was Christianity that really challenges it. Even though many, the wealthy and others, who would, were indulging in this do, would do the opposite. And they had plenty of Bible passages that they could quote from. But remember the devil knows the Bible better than most. And, uh, but uh, not selfishly, to twist it. So the one faith received by the one Lord, transmitted by one baptism. There was one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And so, uh, and you're only baptized once. So some people say, well, I was baptized four times. No, you were baptized once. Perhaps, if maybe uh, all of those baptisms you had were invalid, I don't know. Uh, but uh, there's only one baptism. So let's say I was baptized, I wasn't, but let's say I was, baptized by uh, a Methodist minister who was evangelical and who believed that God was using this and this was a meaningful thing. And in and, 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 and water, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, that's a Catholic baptism. So that you, you uh, so it's, it used to be often because of uh, problems of theology, of did these people really believe in baptismal regeneration, or stuff like that, that there was uh, at least conditional rebaptism. Yeah, which would not be, there's, there's no such thing as rebaptism, that you're baptized or you're not. Uh, so there was conditional baptism uh, at, at times, and sometimes absolute. You know, when people change the formula, it's very trendy in the uh, 70s, 80s, and into the 90s in many liberal Protestant groups and other, uh, and even among people who would profess to be Catholics, including clergy, uh, changing the formula. So they say, oh, uh, a redeemer, no, what is it? Creator, redeemer, sanctifier, which is actually sort of modalist and that that's uh, 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 saying they're just different hats for uh, the one person of God, which is heresy, that's uh, rather than authentic Trinitarian things, and all sorts of things like that. So there's always a temptation to uh, be, uh, quote unquote, current. But where's the current going? Is it flowing, <clears throat> uh, drawing people closer to God, or is it flowing out? Is it flowing into the sewer? Is it flowing out? out to sea somewhere. So, uh, and to put into effect the fullness of faith in our particular situation. So, one baptism, grounded in the conviction that all people have only one God and Father. Again, again, can't say, well, you know, there are multiple gods, a god of my understanding, whatever, no. It's, if I have a god of my understanding, it's not God. Because God is infinite and eternal, it's going to be beyond my understanding. But is, is my concept of God truly compatible with the gospel? Is it an expression of the gospel? Is it an expression of the full deposit of the faith? Or is it some... Uh, there's something uh, that I find more convenient. God, I would just like to 
stick in a box, the sort of God, uh, the God in the uh, Aladdin slab. Or rather, rather than God who's really Lord of everything. And uh, again, St. Irenaeus, for through languages, though, no, though languages differ throughout the world, the content of the tradition is one and the same. So there are some people who say, oh, well, uh, you know, my group, uh, we don't have to believe these doctrines like the Immaculate Conception, Original Sin, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, or even Transubstantiation, so because... Uh, the, you know, the group that we came out of uh, uh, doesn't believe it. Uh, no. Yes, have uh, a theology and a spirituality in truly expressive, truly uh, in contact and developing from the particular tradition, the particular uh, ecclesial tradition, the church of traditions. Uh, but uh, take the full dogmas of the faith, because otherwise it's just, uh, what function, what difference is that between that and people who just uh, chop it off because they just don't want it? So, because it's either true or it's not, and if, if it's not true, then, then uh, the, uh, the papal church isn't the true church, it, or isn't the, isn't the Catholic church, and who knows what that would be otherwise. So, um, the church, though scattered throughout the whole world, even to the ends of the earth. For though languages differ for, throughout the world, the content of the tradition, the capital T, hey paradosis, the handing down, the apostolic handing down, hey paradosis, hey apostoliki, is one and the same. The churches established in Germany have no other faith or tradition, nor those of the Iberians, the, the Spain, Portugal, modern now, there, nor those of the Celts, who were, you know, at that point would have been uh, Northwestern Europe there, uh, or those of the East, which would be, uh, since Irenaeus came from Asia Minor, he would probably be talking about people further east from that, like the, the ancestors of the Assyrian Chaldean uh, Christians. Egypt, the, of the Coptic, but because in Egypt there was linguistic uh, diversity. They were Greek-speaking, Coptic-speaking, uh, Aramaic-speaking even. Um, or Libya, which would be uh, west of Egypt, the uh, east of uh, uh, the western extent of the Greek, uh, Greek East, nor those established at the center of the world, whatever that is. And that this is from uh, St. Irenaeus, again, from uh, one, against uh, heresies, 110, 1-2, uh, 52, 53. And this is from St. Irenaeus, uh, 520. No, no. The, the, what I just did was Irenaeus 521. Uh, 1177. 7 dash 2. 7 slash 2. This coming up is St. Irenaeus against the heresies 3, comma, 24, 1 colon, Patrologia Greca, 7, slash, 1, comma, 9, 6, 6. We guard with care the faith that we have received from the church. So guard with care, not with carelessness. Not uh, uh, letting the faith starve through uh, intellectual and spiritual laziness, or indifference, or even uh, hostility to it, because, you know, the... Uh, the uh, being sucked into the uh, often the worst of the culture, and not having the humility 
but living in the hubris of refusing to be corrected <coughs> by uh, something outside myself. So uh, you know, I'm the arbiter of, of reality. I'm the, I'm functionally the God and Lord of all this, although of course I would give, if I'm of Christian background, I might be giving uh, verbal uh, suzerainty to, to God, but it's, it's a sham. The church's message is true and solid, in which one and the same way of salvation appears throughout the whole world. We guard with care the faith that we have received from the church. For without ceasing, under the action of God's spirit, this deposit of great price, deposit of faith, the pearl of great price, which was in, in Christ himself uh, enshrined, as if in an excellent vessel, is constantly being renewed and causes the very vessel that contains it to be renewed. So that's, again, against the heresies by St. Irenaeus 3.24.1, Patrologia Greca 7 slash 1, 9, 6, 6. So we'll stop there. And let's, well, maybe I'll read this. It's only 10 to 5 already. From the... Uh, Catechism of the Catholic Church with Theological Commentary, Archbishop Burino Finiscella, published by Our Sunday Visitor, 2023. No, 2019, excuse me, 2019. Huntington, Indiana. And this is paid, and, and this is the article by Archbishop Burino Finiscella, and uh, the end of it, on page 561. No, 661, 661. Faith is the serious matter of life. So it's not just some peripheral thing, but for the believer, it really is so central. And uh, testing it shows that. It is sad not to see in this section the word that would have given an overall meaning to the whole of faith, martyr. So this is... Uh, Archbishop Rita Scala is uh, critiquing the Catechism for not going into martyrdom, witnessing even to uh, suffering and death, rejection, suffering, and death. Martyrdom is the sign of the greatest love because for faith it gives supreme testimony which freely chooses the death inflicted <coughs> for the certainty of being in the truth and having life. Well, maybe not being thrilled about that. Uh, death, but uh, death rather than uh, abandoning Jesus. I believed and so I spoke. We too believe and we speak. 2 Corinthians 4.13 With these words, the apostle expresses his conviction that once we have become believers, it is no longer possible to conceive of existence clothed in oneself. So it's always Authentic faith is going to be outreaching. Authentic love is going to be serving. Authentic faith is going to be producing love. Authentic faith is going to be uh, bringing me out to serve according to the calling, according, to, again, to our abilities and our, situ our, our opportunities and situations. But sometimes God calls us beyond these situations in the case of of, of missionaries uh, who are uh, called out to uh, far places and risk martyrdom. Let's say a missionary in uh, Islamic cultures and countries, the Christian missionary, is definitely risking martyrdom. Uh, uh, <clears throat> but the, the glory of the gospel needs to be shared. was authentically, not with uh, malice or uh, uh, misinforming about other people and other cultures and the like. To the contrary, one opens to communion and participation. 
So from faith derived the various forms of involvement in the world, in society, which can result in martyrdom, uh, maybe not martyrdom by pinpricks, but uh, the word martyrdom, martyr comes from the word for witness, to witness to this, to be witnessing to the truth, to be witnessing to goodness, to be witnessing to uh, the presence of God and the, the full deposit of the faith. Involvement in the world, in society, in culture. Rather than locking ourselves up, often addressing the, uh, the problems of the culture, the problems of, of philosophies, which are often more philomoria, uh, love of folly. <coughs> in, in the workplace, by working... You know, again, sharing our faith according to opportunities, but in a way that's that's uh, actually sharing the faith rather than sharing our egos or whacking people over the head or, or the like. Um, in the workplace, and by example, which by the way, in the world, in society, in culture, in the workplace, an example of applying the faith, struggling to apply the faith, struggling to apply the ethics, the teachings of our Lord Jesus and of his New Testament and of the New Covenant, living as, as the church uh, without compromise. Yes, with prudence, with temperance, but with courage to serve that justice, that righteousness of God and the needs of others in authentic justice. as well as our own needs. Where man lives and needs a word that gives a reason for hope without taking away his responsibility. So where the faith tells us we're responsible for our actions and our inactions. So just uh, have, you know, having some uh, vague profession of faith isn't going to uh, take that away. It's going to intensify. Real faith will intensify our sense of responsibility. And, our, and real repentance will intensify our uh, desire to right wrongs, to uh, heal things that we have and people that we have hurt and harmed. Faith, the apostle always teaches that St. Paul, can be measured only with the measure of faith. that God has assigned to each one. See Romans 12, 3. This measure is built in the form of agape. That's, we've talked about agape often. The, uh, the unselfish love that is the nature of God. The transforming love. Not the schmaltzy thing that, of uh, enabling others and ourselves in our, in our vices. And... Uh, Caritas, charity, authentic charity, which by definition can never be possessed by an individual. Galatians 5, 6, so see that, uh, the faith that works through love. It is love, in the end, that makes us understand how the act of faith cannot be limited to a single individual. And while it will never be able to be classified along the multitude of all other acts, as a fruit of love and corresponding to love, and, and also faith is, uh, love is a fruit of faith and corresponding to faith. Faith remains as the constitutive act, constitutive act of one's own being. Again, the faith that works through love. And as such, it's considered unique. So one can understand why the ancient tradition wanted the profession of faith not to be written, but to be main, maintained alive. Of course, also to be written, but not to be uh, written and then basically tossed into the dustbin of history. Again, learned by memory. So our, our faith, the profession of faith, the tenets of the faith to... Memorize Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, 
and, and the like, the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes. By an understanding to make it always present in the various situations of life. The act of faith and effect marks the whole life of the believer, placing itself at that moment in time in which he begins to participate in the eternity of the love of the triune God. So let's pray the Our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Push the finish button.